what rules the world is ultimately decisions. And in order to force your enemies to make the decisions you want, typically you would have resulted to warfare. You kill their people so many times that they say, I give up, I will make the decision that you want me to make. That's called a surrender. And people think of such decisions and big changes requiring war because so often that has been the method of persuasion. But uh, nonviolent tactics like those employed by Gandhi operate by changing the incentives of the adversary, of the person you want to, uh, whose mind you want to change. In his case, the British were occupying India and doing so unjustly and being uh, oppressive and generally uh, overstaying their, their whatever welcome they may have had as colonizers. And in order to convince the British to leave them alone, uh, Gandhi used nonviolent protest to make uh, continuing to try to rule India more trouble than it was worth. And uh, he, he did that without, of course, starting a war, without fighting the British, without costing uh, a, a great many lives. Non, this sort of nonviolent movements are fighting. They are fighting yet, and people get hurt in fights. You, uh, the, the line that I love from, uh, from the movie about Gandhi's life is that uh, fighting, fighting hurts. You will not deal blows, but you will receive them. The, the British killed many Indians who were participating in these uh, nonviolent protests. And that was, uh, that ends up playing right into the hands of the protesters because it becomes very clear to the international community who the aggressors are. If uh, the protesters had been uh, violent in response or had done anything uh, that was morally objectionable, then the British could have easily been justified in saying, well, we were just trying to keep the peace or something like that. And you're, we're kind of seeing a lot of these tactics um, played out in the United States right now where defensive movements by protesters are uh, poorly thought out or executed with poor discipline or infiltrated by disruptive groups that uh, wish to disrupt them. And by uh, not being transparently innocent, they allow their oppressors to say, we were just keeping the peace. We were uh, just trying to control these violent thugs, these rioters, etc." cetera. Uh, so the maintenance of, of the impression of, of, of one's own innocence in a protest is extremely important in its, in its effectiveness. In fact, uh, you might even crudely call it weaponized innocence. This disciplined practice of, of innocence to make the uh, moral costs of uh, oppression uh, astronomically uh, high. And this over time is, is what shifted the opinion of the uh, international community, of the British public, of the British uh, government that was expending a great deal of money to keep their British forces there trying to control a, an Indian population that would simply not cooperate. They would simply not do what the British told them to do, and they wouldn't fight, they wouldn't kill the British occupying soldiers. But if, if he said, go over there, they would say, I'm fine right here, thanks. No. no. And the, uh, these, this incentive shift is what convinced the British leadership that uh, leaving India alone was a wiser uh, use of time and energy than continuing to uh, try to occupy a country 
that would not participate in that occupation uh, and would also not fight back enough to uh, make violent suppression uh, seem excusable either. So I hope that kind of makes some sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought it was um, like I'll I'll link to the the Twitter thread um, in the show notes just so if people can um, can check it out. But yeah, it was, please it was, do. That's that's more organized than this little soliloquy. Oh uh, yeah, look, 